Welcome to our time of worship. We are glad you have joined us. I'm Heidi, the senior pastor of St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church, Ellerslie. Today, helping with the service are Simon as the worship assistant, Amy as our reader, the Ross family who will be doing the Advent candle lighting, and Tammy is doing her behind the scenes jobs and we're grateful for Kristen, who is working at our, using the camera we have, along with the new equipment that has been installed, to see if we can move away from using the iPhone. But the phone is still recording, just to be sure we get this. There have been a number of people who have died in the past short time. Our previous bishop, Ron Mayen, Pastor Hannah Schwabe, who served as an interim here, that was a time between permanent pastors. And Josephine McNeil, Donna, her daughter-in-law, has been attending worship with us. We will remember them all in our prayers and pray that the hope of the resurrection brings peace. We will be celebrating Holy Communion so please have some bread or crackers along with your wine or juice ready for that time in the service. You may wish to ready your space with a lit candle. You may choose to have one for worship plus your Advent candle or wreath and then light that one as the family is doing the candle lighting. You may want a cloth on which you put your bread and wine, and maybe have a Bible, and so on. Everyone is welcome at the Lord's table of abundant and mysterious grace. The choice to participate is yours, just as when we gather together in person. Now I invite you to stand as you're able for the order of confession and forgiveness. And I invite you to make the sign of the cross on yourself as we begin. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of eternal hope who brings healing to our broken lives and world. Hear our cries of pain, brokenness and destruction. We call out to you with an open heart knowing you already know us wholly, and yet we need to hear again words of hope, healing, and reconciliation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. O comfort of all people, we confess that we have forgotten again and again that you call us to full and loving lives. We create barriers for loving and kind relationships. We raise us mountains of hate, distrust, and envy between ourselves and our neighbors. We have forgotten the gospel message of the word born among us. We live lives that are not inflamed with the illumination of this season. Come down again, enliven us, and call us again to new lives in relationship with all of your creation, which calls out for your coming again among us. Amen. May the God who makes every highway straight who lifts up the valleys and lowers the mountains, raise you and enfold you with grace and peace. Know that the God who comes down to be with us comes to be with you, gifting you with God's grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, comfort you with forgiveness. Holy Spirit, awaken you to new life, that your life may reflect the coming 
of Christ into this world. Amen. Now I invite you to be seated, or if you're at home, you can stay standing as we sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Now it's time for the children's message. Hello, everyone. It's nice to see you again. 
Now we're in a new season. We're actually in a new year at the church. I bet you you can see some things that were different than the last time we were here. Remember, I often say the big thing to watch is the color. What's the color that's on my stole and up here and up there and even on our binders? It's blue. Blue is the color of the season of Advent, a color that helps us wait as the days get shorter and there's more nightfall. But there's that time if you wake up early in the morning when the sky is just starting to get light. That's the blue of Advent, the hope. This Sunday is called the Sunday of Hope. And it's hope for a new day. And it's hope for new things. So Advent is the time of waiting before Christmas. And we do some things at church to help us wait. Not just the color, but we have here an Advent wreath. And it has, can you count with me, how many blue candles? One, two, three, four. That means there's going to be four Sundays before Christmas. And this white candle in the middle, this gets lit on Christmas Eve when we celebrate that God has come to be with us. God never goes away, but we need to celebrate again that God has come to us in Jesus. Now, maybe at home, you have an advent calendar with little windows that you open to help you wait. Maybe there's chocolates inside, or maybe a picture, or a little toy, or some words. They have all kinds nowadays. So hopefully you have something that can help you wait. And maybe you have some candles that you will light one each Sunday so it gets brighter and brighter as we get closer to celebrating Jesus, the light of the world. We do one other thing at church here that helps us wait. We watch Mary and Joseph travel to where the manger will be, which is up here eventually. But I wonder where they are today. They're not in that corner. Are they back by you, Kristen? Nope. They're not behind the piano in the organ. Oh, I see them. Simon's got them in the back. They're far away yet. They have a long time to journey to the front when we celebrate Christmas. So you watch. Every Sunday, they're going to come a little closer. Thank you, Simon, for holding them up. Would you put them back in today's spot? And then we're going to pray. Perfect. So everybody can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Help us as we wait and get ready to celebrate your coming to be with us again. Amen. Light one candle for hope. Because the world is broken and the wait is long, but hope just won't let go. Hope holds space for all our longings, lingers on the edge of harsh reality, like the dawn gently awaking the sky. Keep awake, she whispers, for the world is being made new. So we light one candle because it only takes one. Christ with us.
from Isaiah. O oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry, and we sin, because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all of our righteous deeds are like filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name, or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, creation awaits the coming of your Son in wonder. Abide with us in our anticipation and longing, and help us to embrace your mystery. Teach us to open our hearts to you in preparation for new life. Help us to look for you like the long streaks of light across an early dawn sea, and guide us always toward the knowledge and love of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert. For you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Keep awake. That's probably not something most of us want to hear these days. If you're among those who are able to sleep normally and well, that's great. And maybe, keep awake, are words that work for you. 
But for many, this is not an easy time to sleep well. And if we do sleep, our dreams are like none we have ever had before. They can be quite odd and even disturbing at times. The command to keep awake for those whom sleep escapes might just be an irritant at this time. Yet, we are called to keep awake because you don't want to miss what God is doing, what God is preparing, what God might be up to. Jesus was telling his disciples to keep awake three times in today's gospel reading. As I mentioned in the children's message, today is the first day of the new year for the church. So, Happy New Year! The first Sunday in Advent is always the start of the new year in the church. It doesn't begin with festivities, loud sounding cymbals, an angel chorus, or the rush of the wind or flames. It comes to a dark world in great need full of oppression, war, anxiety, and lots of great turmoil. Yes, that sounds like today, but it is what things were like 2,000 years ago. Yes, before the birth of Jesus, and yes, at the time of the writing of the Gospel of Mark, which is our primary gospel for this year. The Gospel of Mark is believed to be written during or just after the Jewish uprising against Rome. Remember, they had hoped that Jesus would save them from the Romans and their oppression. And during this time, the temple was destroyed by the Romans. The Jews believed so much that the temple was where God dwelt. Remember, God first dwelt in the tabernacle that the Hebrew people carried with them in the wilderness, and only after quite a while did God allow a temple to be built where God would dwell. So if that place was destroyed, if the place where God dwelt was destroyed, now what? Now where was God? How could they go on? I think those are some of the questions that we face today. Most of our churches aren't destroyed, though it might feel like it, because we can't go to them. They're closed for in-person worship and in-person meetings and activities. We do continue our ministry although in very different ways. We offer Zoom fellowship times, a few Zoom study opportunities, and of course, worship online every Sunday, and a message each Wednesday. But how do we continue? We miss our community and the connection, the singing. Where can we go to be aware of God's presence now, where is God when we can't gather with family and friends, when we can't gather at church? How do we go on? This part of Mark that I read today is often called the little apocalypse. Now, we often think of apocalyptic things as end times and fire and brimstone type things and lots of drama and destruction. Yet, apocalyptic literature is very much a part of Christianity. And its underlying message is promise and encouragement, usually during very difficult times. Apocalypse is the Greek word for revelation. Revelation means literally taking the lid off of something, which is to reveal. What is being revealed? 
What is God trying to show us? It's been a weighty year. No one really expected what has happened. When we were first shut down, most of us thought, a mm, couple months maybe. And as time went on, we realized, no, it's going to be longer. And then more recently, we thought we'd gotten into a manageable routine. Most of us has countless masks and plenty of hand sanitizer at home, in the car, in our purse, or our pockets. And now, as the cases of COVID spike to scary numbers, we're asked to stay home more. No visiting, not even in our cohort homes. Funerals and weddings are limited to 10 people. And if we are found to be in violation of any of this, we could face a minimum fine of $1,000. As we need to tighten our circle, I think we are tempted to cocoon, to turn inward, to hold things steady. Maybe we don't think we can do anything new. We're just holding on to the threads of the past, hoping dearly that things won't get worse, hoping that we can make sense of something, hoping that no one we love will get sick, and hoping that things will go back to normal, whatever that was. But we are learning things. That having a church presence on the internet is important and valuable. That's a revelation. That we can do council meetings by Zoom, another revelation. That we can do fun youth events online, yet another revelation. Around us in the world, things are getting revealed. There already was discrimination, but the Black Lives Matter movement abuses of people of color got torn open and people stood up and marched. And hopefully awareness will lead to full inclusion and equality for all in the not-too-distant future. We could say that the lid has been taken off. The same is true for the treatment of seniors in some of our seniors' homes. The same is true for the environment. A lot of this has not been on the forefront of the news because the pandemic, the U.S. election, and financial uncertainty and so many other crises have come up. But the environment is still on fire and needs our attention. Our less mobile lives and lack of traveling is giving the earth a bit of a break. This continues to be unraveled before us. Just because we're at home so much of the time doesn't mean we can't beware, watching, waiting actively. We still have work to do. We cannot cocoon and turn inward, at least not for very long. God is here. God keeps calling us to watch. Something important is about to happen. Pay attention for where God is and for what God is doing. It is slowly being revealed. Let us not be asleep or unaware of what God is doing. Courtney Buggs from Working Preacher put it this way. What is at stake when we sleep or allow our senses to become dull during times of crisis? Who is at risk when God's people slip into spiritual slumber? What is the cost for sleeping when the call is to see, to remain awake, and to work? While the disciples were sleeping, Judas, the religious leaders, and a crowd were en route 
to arrest Jesus. We have God's word of promise before us today in the reading of Mark. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. No matter what happens, God's word is always with us. And I don't know about you, but I sigh a sigh of relief. God's got this. And God can find us where we are. It doesn't need to be at church or in any of the places we once felt we were in God's presence. God will break every barrier to come to us, to be with us. Your homes have all become places of worship where you invite the Almighty to come and reside, where you invite Jesus into your midst in whatever bread, crackers, even cookies, and wine or juice you may have used for communion. When you light a candle as worship begins or sit in your favorite chair to worship, God comes to you. We may not know what is going to come during this next year, but we always know who is coming. Jesus. Jesus, who is with us already and not yet. Emmanuel. Come quickly, Lord. Amen. God of power and might. Tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Each portion of the prayers ends with the words, Hear us, O God. We are invited to respond with, Your mercy is great. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as we draw near. Today, we especially pray for the following people in places of ministry. For our national bishop, Susan Johnson, and for our national church staff. For the northern area that we are a part of, for our synod campus ministries, for our synod candidates for ministry, for, Luth for Lutheran Church of the Master Airdrie, in St. John's Lutheran, Alberta Beach, for the staff of Canadian Lutheran World Relief, for Companion Synod Evangelical Lutheran Church of Columbia, for the Most Reverend Linda Nichols, Primate of the Anglican Church in Canada, and the Primate's Office Staff, for the Most Reverend Mark MacDonald, National Indigenous Archbishop of the Anglican, Anglican Church in Canada for the bishops, priests, and people of the Roman Catholic Church. Hear us, O God. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, destructive storms, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice. For those who are opposed, with welcome. For those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are, are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity, we especially pray for the inner city pastoral ministry, the Bissell Center, the Mustard Seed, and the Edmonton Food Bank. Relieve the burdens of all who suffer, sustain bodies, and ease their minds. Hear us, O oh God. 
We pray for the people in our families and congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. Today, we especially pray for Aiden, Iris and Rob, Elsie, Erica and Hank, Sharon and Lloyd, John, Eugenie, Elsie and Erwin, Edwin, Art, Marilyn, Richard, Graham, Tristan, Laura, Karen, Caroline, Maria, Zach, Dawn, Sarah, Sandra, Dawn, Jesse, Jaden, Ava, all, along with all those we name in our hearts before you. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. We continue to pray for a vaccine treatment and cure for COVID-19. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for those who celebrate another year of life, Ray and Henry. Bless them on their birthdays. We pray for those celebrating anniversaries, Krista and Aaron, Marilyn and Alan. Bless them as well and surround all of these, your children, with your love, strength, and grace. Hear us, O oh God. We give you thanks for the lives and witnesses of Bishop Ron Mayen, Pastor Hannah Schwabe, and Josephine McNeil. Comfort all who mourn. Surround them with your never-ending words of promise and hope for a new life in the resurrection of Jesus. Hear us, O oh God. Draw us near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's wave to each other. Now would normally be the time for the offering, so I would like to just offer a few words of thanks to all of you who are able to continue with your tithes and offerings to St. Paul's. Very much appreciated. Let us pray. Generous God, you've created all that is, and you provide us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Yeah, I noticed it. I was going to turn it on for the, after the responses. <laughs> okay, didn't know. Okay, thanks. I didn't know that. God is with you. Come, Emmanuel, into our longing hearts. We lift them up to you. As we gather at this table in anticipation and hope. God of hopeful expectation, who enters into our stories, who births new life into creation, who invites us into a rich and restoring relationship, we come before you with humble hearts to greet you in our midst. You were there when creation burst into being with endless possibilities. You were there when the Israelites tasted liberty and you opened your eyes to new freedom. You were there with Mary when she became a powerful vessel and witness to birth love into the world. You were there with Jesus when he prayed in the garden, when he confronted death and brought resurrection life to your people. And you are with us now 
as we gather at your table, your meal and gift of love for all who come, hungry and thirsty today. We come like those first disciples gathered around the table to hear Jesus' words of promise and hope. On the night when he last ate with his disciples, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. When the meal had finished, Jesus took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new promise of life and love poured out for all of you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Rem remembering his life, his death, and his resurrection, we offer these fruits of creation, bread and wine, and ourselves in grateful service. Thank you for your spirit who works in and among us in times of hope-filled anticipation, who strengthens and sustains us, and who challenges and prods us, who gives us life and continues to surprise us with extravagant grace. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And together we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. This is our Lord's table of abundant and mysterious grace where all are welcome. So now, if you are gathered with others in your home, I would invite you to commune each other. And if you are alone, and to those who are gathered here, I say, the body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you've done great things for us, and we rejoice in this bread and cup. You give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May God, for whom nothing is impossible, restore you and bless you. 
May Christ, in whom is the dawning of grace, carry you and gently lead you. May the Spirit, whose song is gladness, fill you with peace and comfort. Amen. So now it's time for some announcements. Once again, I'm very glad you joined us for worship. Thank you so much um, for everyone who supported Little Blessings with the Preschool Purdy's fundraiser. If I understand correctly, they raised over $1,000. So this is so very much appreciated. And I should have mentioned, um, you will notice if you looked up the bulletin today that there are a number of different authors for different parts of the liturgy. The Eastern Synod um, gathered some of the clergy and other people in their synod and asked them to prepare parts of our Advent liturgy. So I'm very grateful um, for their work and their willingness to share it. Confirmation classes have had to be moved to Zoom like everything else. Um, this coming Wednesday is our last class before Christmas. So 4 o'clock, Zoom opens. Please make sure you've got the confirmation Zoom and not the youth group Zoom connection um, until 5.30. Uh, starting Thursdays this week and for the following two, so a total of three Thursdays at 7 p.m., we're going to have Zoom evening prayer. So like an evening prayer service. I would invite you to have a candle as we gather. And uh, the order of service should be part of the constant contact that you received for today's worship. And it will be sent again on Wednesday with the midweek message just the day before. If you print it out once or have it on your phone or, com well, I don't know if it works on your computer if you're trying to Zoom. But um, then you'll be able to participate with the responses We'll talk about how that's going to work at the beginning of the service. Each uh, week we'll have a different theme, different readings, and perhaps some reflections as well. The last one will include our blue Advent or Christmas service, which will allow us to light candles for those who have passed away this past year, for all of us. Christmas is going to be so very different. So it will be a time to acknowledge that things are just not the same. That you may or may not feel the same joy uh, this Christmas as you, as you have in others. Um, the first Christmas was really simple. Mary and Joseph not in ideal conditions. Um, with baby Jesus it was messy. There was no fancy anything. Um, and so that evening will also be a chance for us to recognize that um, before we move into the celebration on Christmas Eve. And speaking of Christmas Eve, Council has made the difficult decision, actually even before the latest restrictions were announced, to only offer online services for Christmas Eve. It is service to which we normally have quite a few visitors and we have no way of controlling then who comes. Uh, Pre-registration doesn't work the same way. So the safest and I think most meaningful or beneficial way is to do it online. Everybody is welcome to join us online. There will be two services offered, one very similar to our 4 o'clock service, which is geared to children and young families, though everybody's welcome, and a second one, which is similar to our 6 and 8 p.m. service. There will be some special music, and it will contain Holy Communion. Um, they should both be available for 4 p.m. on Christmas Eve. And just a reminder that we continue to have problems with our church phone, so please be patient. I did forget one announcement about our Advent project. 
You can read about it. Our toolkit will be out this Wednesday with that constant contact. There'll be lots of information there, but in advance, we want to do something similar to last year. For those of you who can afford to do this, not, please do not feel any pressure to participate if you're having a hard time making ends meet because we know that is the situation for a number of people. Um, but those of you who can, we are collecting socks, underwear, toques and mitts, and then also um, anonymous notes of encouragement. But more of those details will be in the toolkit. We will have a box just outside of the double doors um, of the church that you can drop your items off at any time. They will be checked regularly and we will um, take the items in. The items that we collect will then go to um, either the Bissell Center or the Mustard Seed uh, or maybe a combination of both. Those agencies all need lots of um, those items, so socks, mitts, toques, or underwear, all ages and all sizes. Thank you in advance. So I invite you to sing our sending hymn, My Lord, What a Morning. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.